Where do they, rec where do they record from? Huh? Where do they record from? Hey, Bez, uh, this is your session, right? Yes. Do you mind if I give you five minutes before the end, you know, just to wrap things up? Yeah, yeah, give me a sign five minutes before the end, that's fine. Um, yeah, Do you need any item? Do you need any item? No. I was wondering where, if, if they're filming all the sessions, where this one is filmed from. I think so. Is it, is it that camera up there, or? Um, I think it's that camera, actually. All of them have been filmed, you know, but I don't know this. There's a central place where they are controlled. Do you have any questions or concerns? No, no, not at all. Okay. No. Thank you. blank whiteboard pad, or oh, I don't know. I don't think these are drawers, they have too many lights.
this is it, so this is the beginning. Um, so if you look on your program, you'll see that it's Gav Gouda who's supposed to be giving this talk. And he was supposed to be giving with Keith J and um, Mark Conroy of Anatech. And, but they're all using different uh, varieties of excuses of snow to uh, not be here. And so I've got slide three for this about midnight last night. Um, but I'm a freelancer, and one thing I've learned as a freelancer is if somebody asks you if you can do something, you say yes, and then figure it out later. <laughs> so, um, slight disclaimer, if this is a bit rough and ready, if I'm using notes a lot, and if I'm talking around things quite a lot, that's because this is quite new. But it's a fun thing, and I've been involved in this initiative, not as long as those guys, but from about uh, January. So, you can leave now if you really want to see Gaz. He has better hair. Okay, so, what we're going to look at, this is the Out of the Box Initiative, which we also talk about as being the Marmy Demo. And what we're going to look at the goals of the initiative, uh, the background, planning, uh, design, and uh, sample content, the demo profile itself, getting it into core, that whole process and how that works, uh, future plans um, and ideas that we might be going forward, there's a lot still to do. We're going to have a demonstration where we'll look at installing it and have a look at the code as well. And then we'll deal with uh, any questions that you might have, and if we have time, we'll have a bit of a play around with it as well. Sound good? Yeah. I do ask a lot of questions as we go through, just to make sure everyone is still with it. I'm very aware that this is the last session before lunch. Um, I'm going to be talking about food. I don't know whether that's going to help. <laughs> and the capabilities of it. So what is Umami? How are we trying to address this concern? So Umami is an installation profile. Is everyone happy with installation profiles? No. Okay, who's not happy with installation? Sorry, I'm not trying. Okay, so installation profiles are a way of installing Drupal with some prepared configuration and sometimes some code and a set of modules that you've chosen to gear it towards a specific purpose. If you've ever installed Drupal, you will have seen some installation profiles. You get a choice between minimal and standard when you install Drupal. Those are the two installation profiles that come with Core by default. So what we're doing here is giving a third installation profile with Core that is better placed to showcase the capabilities of this piece of software. Okay? That's why we call it out of the box. It's to demonstrate what you can do with Drupal without any Actually, adopted. 
involved in it, uh, but the very Ascula has been a driver of this uh, for a long time. Um, Christina Tremellis has done a hell of a lot of work with this. Um, Keith J has done a lot of work uh, on the design. Um, also, you can see with Keith J, we have Sharon J over here. We'll see a lot of recipes. Sharon has made all these recipes. He's invented them so that we don't have to worry about the copyright of recipes and so that Keith can photograph them um, to include them in the demo. So, a lot of work going in there. And she's actually system that Sharon Jay created just for the org account so she could get a commit credit for all the work she did cooking. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not going to read one of these up. Mark Hunter has been uh, really um, important driving this forward. Um, yeah, I'm not, not going to read all these out. I'll publish these slides and you can have a look. But there's like, lots of different roles. Obviously, web is really important in actually giving us buy in, giving us the route into the uh, how it would be so that we can actually get this thing in. Uh, Roy Scholten, uh, very important from the UX point of view. We're building something that's for AD user experience, so we need a guy who is kind of very seated with the UX within Drupal circles uh, to guide us and give us um, inspiration there. Um, Gabor Hotsky, um, and where is he? Lee uh, Rowland, Sarah Lamb, been really good for being committed, so when we get sort of ready to go, they're the guys we can around and say, can we put this in yet? And actually uh, get it. Harry Fisher has been really good at helping us with some of the language issues, and Andrew McPherson has been really good with a lot of the accessibility work as well. So, lots of people. This has been gestating in some form or another for 10 years. If you actually look at the initial issue that kicks this off, the concept of adding some sample content to core, it's actually got a five digit node number 79582. Uh, so, that's the only five digit.
up on uh, PHP Storm because it's probably a bit easier to do. How does that look? Is that readable? We kind of see this. So this is um, this is a checkout of just uh, Drupal 8.6.x, uh, the latest development version of Drupal 8.6. Um, checked out and with Composer install run and nothing else uh, done to it. So if we have a look in our core folder at our profiles, we can see as well as the minimal and standard that you'll see when you're installing Drupal normally and all these testing ones that are hidden um, but still used uh, for testing purposes, we have this one called uh, Demo Umami. And it doesn't really have that much in it to achieve this. We're not trying to show what you can do if you write like a whole metric ton of code. It's what you can do with Drupal mainly by configuring it. So the bulk of what we have is just config that we're going to import when we actually install our install profile. Okay, you can see that's lots of config. Right? I don't need to explain all these different config items and stuff. That would be a very dull tool, even duller than this one. Uh, we have some optional config as well. Um, we have a bit of CSS, but we're in our install profile here. We're not in our theme. Why have we got CSS in our theme? Hmm. So we actually have uh, a warning that we put up because this is a demonstration profile. We want to be really careful that someone doesn't install this and go, oh, that's brilliant. This is nearly like my site. What I'm going to do is I'll install this and make a couple of tweaks and then that will be my site forever. Okay? We do not want to have people building their live sites with this. It's for demonstration purposes only. And if you ever talk to anyone who's done a lot of work with commerce, you know how many actual production sites are out there that used uh, the Commerce Kickstart um, demonstration that was never intended to be for production. It's actually out there and churning through money and doing whatsoever. We really want to avoid that. So we have a little bit of CSS because we put a warning in the toolbar. We tell people, if they're on an administrative page, we want to show them the things. And this is for demonstration purposes. And we have a couple of other places where we try and uh, catch that as well.
you can achieve this is you put in lots and lots of hours of effort, but we're not going to let you use this one, even though it's almost exactly what you want. Uh, maybe I'm being too bitter. That, that feels like almost worse than not having it. Uh, I don't think it's fair to say it's worse than not having it, uh, but I, I think it, it's valid. We need to be careful around the expectations here. We do let people know, so that's not the only warning we have this year in a bit, that actually if you choose your army from the selection, Yes, it is. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so uh, we have uh, modules, uh, but we only have this one module, and the only purpose of this module is actually to install our dummy content. You can't install content through a bunch of config, um, and because we don't have that migrate back end, we have custom code in here that is actually going to generate our um, content. And you can see that we actually have the HTML articles that we're going to install. back to it. Um, and we have all the images and stuff. Uh, you notice that we've had to put HD access files in here because if we didn't then anyone who site was serving Drupal could actually be serving pictures of chocolate brownies uh, if people went to the right location. And there was a real consternation that someone could go to the White House website and serve pictures of brownies rather than serve them from their own food blog. Uh, so yeah, so if you actually do put this anywhere public facing and you're using a web server that isn't um, Apache, like Nginx or whatever the Microsoft thing is, um, then you will have to do your own uh, prevention to stop people accessing like the images uh, that we have here that is built into our uh, default content. And also the recipe instructions themselves are in uh, HTML files that make sense. We did start with everything in the, in the CSV files and it made reviewing patches of changes to the recipes really, really difficult when your entire recipe is like one field in a CSV file. So I split those out. Um, so we, we have a bunch of tests. We're trying to get stuff into core. You can't do that without actually showing that you've got adequate uh, test coverage. Um, and that's pretty much it. And we also have a theme that is called Umami that has all the kind of usual themey stuff that you would expect to make your site look nice. <clears throat> so we have some uh, challenges around this uh, as opposed to when you're just developing a site uh, for a customer. Because this is out of the box, you, really could, you couldn't go to Contrib. This is to show what you can do with just Drupal. And also you can't use
accessibility is really, really, really important. Um, there's a lot of considerations around here. There's a lot of our issues where we've got some really cool stuff, and then it's kind of bounced back because we haven't fully considered the accessibility implications of what we're doing. And this bit has been really good in jumping on all our stuff and making sure we're doing things like we have high enough contrast uh, between background colors and foreground colors. Simple stuff like that makes a real difference. Um, we want to showcase the accessibility. to one. Okay, so we've got like 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, so, process of getting it into core. Has anybody here got stuff into core before? Put your hands up if you've got core code credit. Okay, so lots of people have not um, been through that journey yet. <coughs> so, to actually get the profile itself into core, we had to get approval from the community review, which me and Alex go here, and the design itself went through the community review on the Drupal issue queues. Let's get um, product management framework managers to A, agree that this is a good idea in the first place, and B, that we hit our mission, and also accessibility and success is, is a uh, stable blocker. So to get things into core, we had to address all these issues before it was considered uh, fit. And we had like several rounds of reviews to actually get this in, and Mark did an awesome online presentation to all the uh, product managers at short notice going through what we'd done that really kind of kicked off So we did get it committed first to 8.6, and if it was committed to 8.6, that's not going to come out in the six months yet. So we have to <coughs> have address any issues before anyone's going to be using that in anger. Um, and it's also in 8.5 as a hidden profile. So if anyone's been playing with 8.5 and was shaking their head earlier when I said it's included, it is there, but you can't select it, but we can get around that if you actually want to select it. And the idea is that once people have got it and have a look at it and it's had a few more eyes on it, we'll be able to unhide it before we get to 8.6. So maybe at 8.5.1, you will be able to do the GUI select and mark it as one of your installation op um, options when you come through the If you do have a play with it and you see the initial design, you will see that there's some things that we haven't implemented yet. So we've done very much an MVP. There's, it's very fully featured, but there are some things that we haven't done yet. That's just time for
So we have here, let's move this over. Right, that's the wrong one. That's migration. That's tomorrow's book. Uh, where's the other thought? This one. Is that kind of readable? Let's go bigger. So here we've got, uh, this is just folder that I've got here. It's just, I've just checked out the latest 8.5.x and done a composer install. Um, and I have crashed the database. So if we have a look at what that looks like. 8.5.x. <coughs> and so I'm going to choose this in English. Oh, that's standard and minimal. You can't see it because it's hidden. But over here, this is 8.6, uh, latest version of PED. And if we have a look at this one, oh, standard minimal demo, umami. It's really tempting to do the umami in the Vic Reeves Uvavu voice, <laughs> which just derails any meeting or call that you have uh, with it. Uh, so here we have uh, the demo. And um, if you select this, this warning pops up. For demonstration purposes only, if you want to tell people about that. Uh, and then save and continue, and it's kind of like installing Drupal normally, and it's complaining because I'm just using my local environment, and it's got all this to the PHP and stuff, but we don't care. Right, okay, that's going to go away and install. Uh, so if you want to play with N8.5, um, oh no, back here, uh, you can install it if you use Drush. Uh, so. Can we read this? Can everyone see this at the bottom? Shall I move it up? Yeah, okay. I'll leave it. Uh, Dru Drupal site install. And our profile is called Damu Army. Okay, we've got that, yes. Drush 9, nice. Is everyone using Drush 9? Hands if you're using Drush 9. Do you like it? Yes, yes okay. Have you had a look inside Drush 9? Does it make more sense than Drush 8? <laughs> cool, right, so okay, that's, that's installing by the command line. Let's see what the other one's up to. We can do questions while we're doing this. If anyone has any questions that we haven't uh, reached so far, just uh, shout them out at me. And I, if I don't like them, I'll pretend I can't hear them. This is all standard install stuff, nothing new here. Why did you go down the path of pushing it into core rather than, say, like a particular distribution of the core? Because, because the very, it's a good question, and the very point of this is to show what you can do with Drupal without adding anything to it. Once you move the capability to do that outside of Drupal, you've changed your thing already, and it's like what would happen with Drupal if we add some stuff to it. There's some really good things that do that already. There's a really good distribution called Barbase that has a ton of contrib configured in a really nice way. If you haven't played with that, go and have a look at it. That's a really nice thing for actually just seeing. It's got a nicer uh, theme. It has a load of stuff you might want to play with. It has uh, some exciting views backends, like so graphing stuff, and loads of really nice stuff. If you want to show what you can do with Drupal, Acquia have a product as well called Acquia Showcase or something. Acquia Demo Framework. That's it. Uh, which is also really good, like, here's all the bells and whistles, here's stuff from Contrib, um, play with that. Um, but this is, like, what would this look like if we totally did it just with core? Can you repeat the name, first name again? Uh, Varbase. Uh, Varbase. Let's, let's bring it up. If you go to drupal.org, project, uh, Varbase. Yeah, like... I haven't used this actually for any production things. So I've spun it up and taken some really, really good ideas from how it's uh, configured, found some really nice contributed modules for it. It's a really nice version of Drupal that just works um, out the box. You can even take its, um, I think you can, no, it's not its own thing, but uh, yeah, this is done by a company who's like invested a lot of time in doing this and adding tests and stuff like that. It's really, really worth playing with if you haven't done uh, so far. Okay, uh, right, what are we demoing? This is, this is Umami, which, look at the 8.6 one, is that one finished? Okay, that one's finished as well, so we have just to prove that this is Umami in 8.5. Here we 
we go. Right, there's your mummy. So it looks like this. Well, obviously, we're on quite a wide, um, quite narrow viewport, but this is designed to be um, usable um, on mobile. You know, it's all responsive. Do -do -do -do. Looks nicer. Memory collapse the nav. Da -da -da. Uh, carrots. Articles about carrots. Mm. <laughs> Who's interested specifically about carrots? Who's going to look at this and go, oh, there's carrots, or there's brownies? <laughs> I'm, I'm brownies. Um, right, what are we showing? Oh, so we talked about things like that, additional warnings. So if we go to any page that Drupal considers to be an administration page, maybe we're going to look at an article and we're going to edit it. Here's a list of articles. Grow your own herbs. Okay, if we want to edit this. Oh, there's a total warning here. So, and this site is intended for demonstration purposes. Okay, so if you actually, so it doesn't show up. If you're trying to give a demo from the front end and show you kind of things, then we don't put this in your face all the time. But if it looks like you might actually be trying to achieve something, change something, then we're going to remind you that, you know, there's, there's something, something about this. And at the moment, this actually points to a page on Drupal.org so you can go and get more information, which might explain better why it's a bad idea to actually use this to build your uh, site um, going forward. Okay, so we have what we've got actually in this, making it. So we have a couple of content types, um, recipe, um, and this probably is exactly the same as the uh, core article. Images, tags, recipe has a couple more fields, like author, cooking time, difficulty that we can use to build views, uh, tags, so on and so forth. Um, Uh, it probably has some shared configuration, but there's no, it doesn't actually uh, inherit from the standard profile. I think there might be some issues floating around in court about making profiles depend on each other. I'm not 100% I'm not sure where that's, where that's up to. Um, yeah. Again, the proper people giving this presentation would be able to give you a much better answer than that. Um, so yeah, so we're kind of about out of time, so we haven't actually had a look to play around with it, but at least you know how you can spin this up, um, have a look at it, uh, where you can go um, if you have any questions that I haven't been able to answer, or if you want to get involved, like the more people we have helping out with this, there's loads of things we need um, helping on. In fact, let's have a quick look at the issue queue for this. Okay, this is just like the current status of what's going on with different things, making things better, improving things, adding new recipes. We have a recipe for chili sauce that has not yet gone on that I'm quite keen to get it. Um, but don't eat it unless, uh, yes. So, yeah, um, so that's time. So uh, thanks very much. And um, if you're interested in my great come to my other talk tomorrow, it's at the same time but in a different room. Thank you. Oh, I thought we did the questions. We can do more questions, I don't mind. Oh, quick other thing. Um, oh, no. No. Play. No. There we go. Um, complete aside, just while I have people's attention, uh, as I said earlier, me, Phil, and Arena run the user group up in Manchester. Um, come along. We're always looking for people to come and give presentations. Um, and also in November, we'll be running our third unconference. We've done it for the past two years. Uh, probably the first weekend, but we're still finalizing uh, venue and stuff. Cheap event, no formal thing, and anyone can actually come and talk. It's a great alternative to camp-style events because you'll see people you don't normally see get selected, being able to give talks, and you'll also see people you do normally see get selected trying out new talks before they try them in a more formal um, environment. Plus, it's really cheap compared to camp events. So uh, do keep an eye on the NW Doug Twitter account. Uh, for any announcements on that, we'd love to see you up in Manchester in November or beforehand. Thank you. I really get to. No, I haven't done anything there for a bit. Um, hey, Barrett, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good. Do you know anything? No. You're embarrassed. Hi, how are you?
Mine, mine, mine's totally gone. Yeah. Mine, 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 went, mine went walk about. So I was just wondering, what if clients ask you, like, this looks like almost the website that I want, but just click on dollars. Can you do that? I mean, how would you, how would you do that? So I would take a look at the, um, the thing. Just, I just copy and paste it, right? Don't, and create, you could create your own install profile. You could input, import from standard and then import the config from Umami. Um, you could, there's a patch, there's a module called config installer. No, install profile generator. So you can actually take a working site and generate your own install profile from it, and that won't tie you into the updates going forward. So that's an option. And it wouldn't bother updates from the... It wouldn't get the, it would get the core updates, but not the Umami updates. So you can have the updates in the install profile so as well as in core. So you still get your security fixes and, and stuff, but you wouldn't leak in any changes that have gone in there. So that, that's the kind of things that are so the recently that. Did, uh, finished, uh, I think, an AK website for a cooking channel. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and then uh, just after we launched, the Umami thing uh, came, came along. So <laughs> well, this is kind of 80% of what we just built. Right? Yeah, yeah. You're the people we need to be careful for. <laughs> So, so yeah, like that's 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 the kind of thing I'd explore. Yeah, certainly take it, use it, build it, but don't use it as the install profile going forward. Yeah, well, like we'll all be uh, well. Certainly, there'll be a bunch of us who will be at front end anyway. Yeah. Because I'm coming to front end. Um, I'm sure Mark's coming, right? Yeah. Um, he's been one of the main drivers. So there'll be. Larry might be, but um, the other one, uh, the Spanish guy. Ruben. Ruben, yeah. okay. He's leading the sprint, so. Uh, okay, there, yeah. cool. And, and Preston will be there as well, but on, on Thursday, so. We might make a dent in the IE 11 if we're at front end United as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. How's cool. planning going for that? Okay. How's the planning going for front end? Uh, I'm so lucky. Uh, we yesterday, the day before yesterday, we got our main sponsor. So oh, wicked. We have community sponsoring pretty well. We sold 9 out of 30, 9 out of 25, so. We save with budget now, and that, yeah. makes, that makes it we can spend more on making the event like awesome, doing all these social events in the evenings and stuff. So Wicked. Yeah, it's going to be an amazing. I'm, re I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really, I'm really ex expecting 500 attendees. I think we can make that. We've already sold 250 tickets, and we have months to go. I better check. I've got mine. I think I have. I'm not sure. I'll catch you around. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. 